So the start of the race then, a crucial part in any Grand Prix, but in Mexico, it's a really long run down to the first corner. So it's about 800 meters, which means Ferrari's one, two on the grid need some serious protecting from Verstappen behind. And as the lights went out, there is actually nothing they can do because Max gets so much a better start than both Ferraris and he immediately comes through and splits them. Now it looks like Leclerc just is so focused on staying straight on the initial getaway that he's very late to start defending the inside. You can see Max's trajectory already is to split them. Carlos Sainz trying to just hold his own line on the inside, but he's not got a great start either. So Verstappen has the chance. And as Leclerc now starts to cover, he's already got the Red Bull down his inside. So it's a nightmare stuff for, uh, for Leclerc from pole. And the Ferraris are getting swamped here because now Perez has got an incredible run down towards the first corner. He gets a triple slipstream, pulls out to the outside, has the racing line. And then we have the contact then between Leclerc and Perez. Verstappen's on the inside and Perez is sent spinning out and retires from the race. It's, uh, it's a nightmare start for all the Mexican fans that were cheering him on relentlessly through the weekend. He's made contact! He's made contact with Charles Leclerc into the first corner! It is uh, definitely on Checo this one in a similar vein to Hamilton in Qatar turning in on his teammate George Russell. This is the, uh, the clearer shot. Three drivers then coming into the first corner. Leclerc defending from Verstappen. They're pretty much neck and neck coming into this first turn and is simply a squeeze from, uh, from Checo. You've still got Max there holding his line on the inside, doing what he has to do to keep the position. You've got Charles in the middle. He cannot do any more. He's got Verstappen on his inside, but he doesn't want to just break and back out of it. He's still in the mix of this fight as well. He doesn't have to back out and give the space to the, to the Red Bull on the outside. Checo's got to give the two rivals on his inside a bit more. And that was, uh, was the case as well for Hamilton and Qatar. Perez saw them, no doubt, when he was getting the big slipstream down to the first corner, but he simply starts turning in, pinching Charles, and then the, uh, the contact happens and, uh, and Perez is sent out of the Grand Prix. And it's remarkable, really, that Leclerc managed to carry on with such good pace without that front wing end plate as well. So Leclerc gave that position back, but that's Perez out. We can see then on board with Charles, the, uh, the star initially defending from Verstappen, and you can just hear the wheel spin. Look at Leclerc's steering wheel. It's exactly straight at this time. He's just focused on keeping the wheel straight to get the best traction possible in this first phase of the start. Now, logic would say, if he started peeling off to the right-hand side, he could defend that inside line from Max, and that would give him the best chance of uh, defending into the first corner really being on the inside in the, the first corner of Mexico is such an advantage, it's difficult to go around the outside. But because he's on the limited wheel spin, if he'd put any sort of lateral load in, the wheel spin would have got even worse for him. So you can just hear he's just on the edge of the wheel spin. As soon as that's settled, he's gone up through the gears, then he starts to look to the right hand side, then he can start to change his line as the traction is, uh, is settled but it's too late. So Verstappen's initial launch was just too good for the Ferraris on the front row. And I don't think there was a lot that Leclerc could do. He kind of needed a better start from his teammate to try and box Max in. From this position, there's still not a lot that Charles can do. He could back out of it very early, but fighting for a lead of the race when you've been on pole position, I think it's good that he, he keeps his, himself stuck in here just to try and keep the pressure on Verstappen. And Perez here is in the difficult position. He's on the outside. It's always gonna fall to him the, uh, the contact really. He's got to be a bit more cautious and he is the opposite of that. So as Perez turns in, you can see Leclerc is now starting to coax the Ferrari in as well. And there's just nothing he can do. Now Checo's turning in pretty sharply for the apex there. He's aiming towards that spot in the corner and he's just not got his Red Bull clear. And so Charles, you can see he's, he's turning full lock right to try and avoid it. He's going to try and squeeze Max, but there's just not the space really to turn in earlier or harder than he's doing. So there's a little bit of contact there with the side pod of Perez. That'll put a hole through that. And then Leclerc's having a little slide. And now he's just going to uh, run slightly further away from Verstappen and into Perez even more. But this one is completely on, uh, on Checo. And it's a tough one because from fighting for the lead in the Mexican Grand Prix, I think he got a bit excited. And the drama, the emotion of the weekend maybe just came a little bit too much for him. You could see on the, uh, the starting grid, actually, he's already pointed in quite an aggressive angle. He's actually, as he pointed here, he's going to head straight for that, uh, that pit wall there. So he's lined up. He knows his intention is to try and get towards a slipstream as the inevitable bunching on the inside will come. So he gets a brilliant launch immediately comes around the outside of Daniel Ricciardo. And now this is just a great moment for a driver. You're seeing the top threes fan out. You've got an ideal slipstream of whichever one you want. And he gets into this position. And you just know, coming in towards this, uh, this stadium section, there's a chance of a race lead. 
if you're Sergio Perez on home soil. The Mexican crowd are like very few other crowds in the calendar. They give just this one driver so much support. And I think that for Checo, that is maybe the reason that he's just gone for a bit of effectively a Hail Mary. It's a hugely risky pass with about a 5% chance of coming off, considering he's got not only Leclerc, but Verstappen on the inside as well. And I think it's probably just a little bit of that home crowd, the adrenaline there for Checo that's meant he's just gone for it as he's got the great start. If he'd pulled it off, fifth to first would have been dramatic. One of the great home starts in modern Formula One, but it was not to be. And it ended up being very similar to this one, as mentioned. So you've got Qatar on the left, Mexico on the right. Race is split by just uh, Austin in the middle. And we get the pretty much exact same incident. You've got Verstappen on the inside in both. Hamilton took the blame eventually for uh, the one on the left. And you can see he's starting to turn in and squeeze Russell. And Perez is doing exactly the same to, uh, to Leclerc. The contact is similar and the result is the same as well. Retirements for the drivers on the outside. Russell had a spin. Leclerc did very well to keep going. And where he was quite lucky is that he could actually just go straight across that grass and rejoin, whereas Russell didn't have that choice because it's a long right-hander. So he ends up spinning the car as well. Leclerc could straighten up, go across the grass, and as I said, remarkably carry on with a, a lot of front-wing damage. It has been done, the move on the outside before though, and this is what Checo was probably aiming to do. It's a repeat of 2021, Max Verstappen in third position. He's got the two Mercedes on the front row. This is the dramatic season in modern Formula One between Hamilton and Verstappen, but it's actually Bottas on pole, and he gives Max a chance to attack the two Mercedes on the outside. And we're into a very similar position as we head towards the breaking point. You've got Bottas in the middle, Hamilton on the inside, slightly further back than Verstappen was, and Verstappen in 2021 on the outside. But look at the difference between what Max does and what Checo does. He's so late on the brakes that when he turns in, there is a whopping great space on the inside and he can make it through. Whereas Checo was turning in from this point, which is just never going to happen. So if you want to turn in from the outside, you want to commit to the move, you have to do it on the brakes really to command that space on the inside where there's no time for the Mercedes to react now. So uh, Verstappen managed to do that, deep on the brakes, brave on the brakes, and he made it through to the lead of the race. That is how it's done in 2023, turning in with two cars on your inside and not clearing them in that braking zone. Ends in a crash and a retirement for Perez and a lot of upset Mexicans in the crowd. It's the worst thing that can happen at your home Grand Prix, you know, but uh, the gap was there. I was ahead of Charles and um, I wasn't expecting Charles to break that late, to be honest, uh, because he had a lot less room for maneuver. So I just tried it and uh, I just went for it. First of all, it's obviously a really big shame that it happens with Checo on, uh, at his home race. On the other hand, looking back at the images also, I had nowhere to go. So I, we all break at the same point. And then I was trying to stay on the right as close as possible to Max, but Checo, I think, didn't know that Max was there started to turn in and then we collided.